Very nice, that worked out pretty good. On today's shooting tip, we're gonna talk about shooting on a bipod. We're not on a bipod here. I feel that discussion needs to start on the bench. Uh, it's pretty important to understand how your rifle reacts when you're shooting so that we can adopt shooting positions and equipment that give us consistent point of impact. Now this is a, a classic bench rest setup. We've got a, uh, a Caldwell Rock front rest. We've got a couple leather bags on here. And what we're trying to do is get a really nice, smooth, free recoil. You can see on the shot that that rifle just recoils straight back into my shoulder. I've got a consistent pressure on my shoulder, so we get consistent loading on a recoil lug, consistent barrel harmonics, and the way the gun reacts and torques is the same every time. Now those things right there will give me very consistent performance on steel. You can see that group that I just shot there was sub half minute of angle at 955 yards. We're shooting in a two and a half uh, minutes worth of wind and uh, we're still able to maintain that type of group. What we're really exploring is the elevation that my setup is giving me at that range. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step down here on my midway uh, field shooting mat. I'm gonna set my bipod up on here, uh, bring my rear rest under, and get in a position like I would adopt when I'm shooting in the field. I'm gonna compare my point of impact from that bipod uh, that I was getting here off of this shooting rest equipment. Now, on a bipod, what we're really concerned about when you're shooting is that your point of impact is different than it is uh, from the bench, number one, and also number two, that, that that point of impact is not consistent. So those are two different problems that we want to try to address. Now, if my bipod shoots to a different point of impact, that's easy to fix. We can just zero our gun from the bipod in preparation for a hunt. Uh, if it's not consistent, then on the hunt, we can't be certain that our point of impact is going to be correct. So we want to look at some techniques uh, that'll give us a good point of impact. And uh, on a bipod, uh, especially on this Atlas, what we try to do is simulate that free recoil that we get from the bench. So to do that, we need to be able to shoot with the bipod loaded forward. So if, if you see there's a little slack in this mechanism on the bipod, we'll be able to push that bipod forward all the way and then get a really solid rear rest right here so that when we shoot, that bipod comes straight back or, or nearly so into our shoulder just like it does on the, on the bags. That right there is, is the ideal in selecting a bipod. If it's a very rigid bipod, it behaves just like if the bipod's loaded to the rear. When I shoot, it tries to grab and jump, and it bunches up whether it's out in the gravel, on the rocks, in the dirt, you know, it, it, it's not consistent. And sometimes we'll get a muzzle up as the bipod tries to climb up over that terrain. That's where you'll find that inconsistent performance. So when selecting a bipod, pick one that gives you this really nice ability to simulate that performance that we see off the bench. I'm going to grab those shells, I'm going to sit down, shoot a couple shots at this target range and verify for myself that this rifle is ready to shoot for the upcoming hunting season. So let's go ahead and get one in here. Now I'm going to go ahead and load forward and I'm looking for a consistent point of impact. Wind dropped off about a minute and a half worth. Looks like that shot's about a quarter minute lower. Do another one. Again, got another shot in there that's about a quarter minute lower. Elevation's holding really nice. Last shot. Yep. 
Very good. Have a little bit of spread there on the horizontal, just with the wind varying on me. Uh, we're not seeing a lot of mirage, so we don't have a lot of indicators. But that entire group, measuring with the reticle, is a half minute low from bullseye. So I just discovered that this gun, in the shooting position I'm adopting, shoots approximately a quarter to a half minute of angle low at 955 versus off the bench. Now that's good for me to know because now all I need to do is just adjust up one click or two clicks, it splits right there in the middle for uh, my next hunting event, which is coming up here in just a couple weeks. So I'll, I'll put a little more time in on the, on the bipod and I'll practice shooting in, in field situations. Maybe we'll get a little crazy and, and uh, get on some rocks, get on some inclines, you know, maybe do some hillside shots. That will tell me whether I'm ready and, and for this hunting opportunity I'm gonna see where I might need to take a longer shot. And I'll be confident that my point of impact is gonna be where it should be.